Yes, yeah, appreciate everybody's time today. Again, trying to connect you guys uh, and our fan base, student body with our players. Um, we were obviously excited in the recruiting process to get Brock to stay at Texas, a guy that I have a lot of respect for, competing against him over the years. Um, one of many stories with Brock is uh, did a great job with his body this summer. I think uh, John Riley did a lot of things with mobility. I think he's going to be as strong as ever, durable as ever, and uh, just a lot of really good things in the weight room. Uh, one of the biggest things with these, you know, transfers and new players, and I and I view Jace and Brock and all these guys the same way is, you know, we, we have great respect for the coaches that, that uh, worked with these guys before. So we know we're getting a guy um, with Brock that Shaka did a great job with, and now we look to kind of try to take the next step. Christian to my right, same thing. A lot of respect for the program and coach he was at at Creighton. Uh, Christian's a guy that also had a great uh, offseason, known as one of the best athletes in college basketball, actually increased his vertical this summer. Went from like 36 to I think 41 or 42 last time out. Uh, dropped a lot of body fat. So uh, I want to give John Riley and his staff, Falone, those guys, a lot of credit this summer. But ultimately, it's the players that deserve the most. Um, but excited to have these two guys with us today. Uh, last year, while he was saying those things, I didn't think much about it. We had games to play and other things to focus on. But when he got the job, it gave me confidence that staying was the right decision for me and that I would be happy here. from about like 35 or 36 to a 42. And um, a lot with John, Coach John Riley, we did a lot of work, conditioning, uh, just legs, just a lot of building of the strength. And those little things like that, they add on, they add on over time. And so just working harder over the summer and getting my body right and eating healthy just changed my body a lot and helped me get to a new level. You know, uh, I would say a little bit more of the same. I've seen the stuff before, but you know, um, he pushes you to get better and get to a, a higher standard to yourself. And so, when you live by that, it helps you um, get to that area. You know. Yeah, I mean, I was, it was pretty surprising, honestly. But I, I knew I had some capabilities, so it was good to help him, uh, help him, help me to get there. Could have gone either way, bang, bang, play. But, but his momentum carried you over to you. And you were so impressed with his hustle that just gave him, just gave, gave him five, you know, right out here. And you don't, you don't see that interaction between the coach and the whole team. But I, I took it as that you really respect the hell out of his hustle, even when it's going against you. Brock. No, uh, no doubt about it. I've always had respect for players that play the game with like a, um, a no regret, no backup plan kind of approach. And Brock was always that guy. We uh, had a chance to watch him a little bit on the circuit in high school and um, didn't have much success recruiting him. Not sure why we couldn't even get a home visit, but uh, so, um, but I'll have the ultimate say on that, you know. But um, no, Brock's a guy that plays the game, uh, wears his passion. His intensity on his sleeves. Uh, he's, he's a leader of our team in a lot of ways. Every team's got to have one of these guys. I've been uh, super proud of Brock this summer, trying to kind of channel some of that into maybe a little bit more poise and discipline. But there's no doubt about it. We want him to be that guy. And um, he had some big games against us. Now, it wasn't just that last game. I mean, one year he came into uh, Lubbock and hit some threes on us. And so he's just the ultimate competitor. So I don't want to speak for him, but you know, our, our teams and our staff have always respected him from afar. In the moment, uh, just you're, you're right, my momentum just carried me over there. But prior to that, there was a lot of respect for Coach Beard and what he had done at Tech. 
Uh, he didn't. He never got any traction recruiting. Always wanted to be a Longhorn. Couldn't see myself anywhere else. So that was that was why uh, the door wasn't open on that front. Our bodies has been, have been the biggest change. All four of the returners and every uh, transfer and player that we have this year have made significant strides over the summer. Coach Riley's one of the best strength coaches, and from top to bottom, you can see improvement. Christian, a little bit about yourself. I mean, what I read out of the Omaha paper and stuff, um, it looks like you had a late growth spurt. Yeah. Maybe it was late on the recruiting trail initially. Is that fair yeah. to say? And um, the story I read says you barely made the JV team. Yeah. Is that, is that true? <laughs> Yeah, What's up with that? I mean, so as a freshman, I was about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and uh, just like slow, little, like nothing too crazy. And then sophomore year, I grew to about 6'3", and then that's when I was on like JV. And then my junior year, I came back to school, and I was just like way taller than everybody. And they're just yeah. looking at me crazy, and I'm like, oh, wow. Everybody's like grew to about 6'7", and it just helped with my game. Uh, athleticism came too and so that's why I was late with recruiting with me. Yeah. So. What, uh, and then how, how, how would you say that the recruiting process went initially uh, as, as your path to, to freshman? Uh, well I mean they were in really early they showed a lot of love and um, they had a lot of care for me and so uh, I find that intriguing same as it was here whenever I entered the portal uh, I know they care about me over here and want the best for me so I usually tend to fall towards those type of schools. Bob, as far as the question, why did you leave Creighton and why did you choose Texas? You know, uh, I feel like for a lot of people, it's just you got to get a switch up of scenery. I think it's a great um, spot down here in Austin and good people, and we love to win down here, so it was an easy decision to make. I mean, at first we thought it might be a little bit difficult, but everybody's moving around around the whole country with the whole uh, year. You can like transfer and still play, and so uh, we're not taking it too much as like a setback because we're just fighting time right now, and so uh, just keep getting better from there and just working together as a team will be just fine. It's been easy, honestly. We all live together, so like we're just seeing each other every single day and spend a lot of time with each other. So blood, sweat, and tears all just help us get closer. Yep. Uh, Brock, this this could be a interesting dynamic with all these different guys coming in and four of you diverse here. How, how have you guys made that easier on them? Uh, the dynamic of new guys coming in and the four returners is all mellowed out because we all want to win. Everyone knows that their goals will become reality if the team goals happen. If we win, good stuff happens for the individual players, and we have a mature team, the oldest team in the country, and we all realize that. Yeah, when, I mean, like you were saying, we have a whole bunch of older guys. And so when you've been in college basketball for a little while, you realize you got to find a chip. And since we are older and experienced, we got to use that to our advantage. And then it's got to be the toughest team out there. Yeah. Yep. Brad, what do you mean by that? Because I mean, you've been on some, mm -hmm. you, you track Texas. And you see their makeup for Texas and Saturday. What do you think of this group? Uh, just harping on the maturity. Everyone at different places have done extraordinary things. Marcus was a great player at his previous school, Timmy, Christian, Devin, and everyone has their talents. And with our maturity, we're able to highlight those and do what we're good at on the court.
Yeah, get it started with the respect we had for, for Creighton. And um, so we know he'd been coached. We know he'd been playing high-level games. We actually played against each other, right? Your freshman year, this guy's beat us in Las Vegas. Um, so I was familiar with Christian and, um, you know, kind of being the basketball fan we are in our office at night. We see games and stuff like that. So uh, basketball-wise, I think he's a positionless player. I um, think he can do a lot of things around the basket. Obviously, it's proven, but we, we share a vision that he can stretch his game out and do different things on both ends of the floor. So he's a versatile player. He's a high-character guy, plays hard, teammate. Um, just how we, we, we believe in Christian. They both have great coaching styles. Uh, Coach Beard, he's going to push you very hard and get the best out of you. And I feel like uh, that's exactly what we need over here. High character guy. He cares about us extremely. And uh, he loves to win, and so do we. So it's a perfect match. Jeff and then Bob. Christian, going back to that uh, growth curve. Small yeah. Five, ten, six, seven, of course, over a year and a half, two years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it changed my position completely. I was point guard, and then uh, I had to go and be like more of a forward role. And so it helped me like uh, learn how to pass in and like kept some of my ball handling and just like vision and IQ out there on the court. And so, uh, and then added on with athleticism and height, it just kind of just benefited my game. So, so. I don't think he's a big man. I don't I think Christian's a basketball player, so I don't view him as a big at all. Bob, last one for the player. Yeah, so Brock, we haven't talked to you since everything ended last year. I'm, I'm curious how hard everything was at the end of that with the Abilene Christian loss, shock of departure, everything you went through with your teammates. How long, how, how difficult was it? How long did it take you to kind of get past it? It was difficult. Uh, we were on the wrong side of an upset, and there were a lot of changes uh, because of that game. But it was no more than a week uh, for me to recover and get back to the process. I think it was a little over a week when Coach Beard got the job. I made my way back to Austin in the gym, and we started working the next day. I'd already decided I was going to come back. Uh, this university is for me. Couldn't imagine myself being anywhere else. Christian Brock, thank you guys. Just not hey, some you members of language right there, but I think if I hear that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, Christian. Yeah, I think yeah, I agree with that. I think um, you know every player, every coach looks for certain things. Every player looks for certain things, and um, you know, look, everybody values talent and athleticism, but some people value maybe skill a little bit more or less than toughness. But for us, it's no secret we like tough guys. Um, I'm not talking about just physically tough either. I'm talking about mentally tough. I mean, I, one of the things I always had respect for Brock is how his, his role would always kind of change, and he was always ready. You know, there'd be games where he'd play a couple possessions, and there'd be games he'd play 35 minutes, and he seemed to me like always to be ready. Uh, so there's a lot of things about Brock that, that we like. Yeah, Christian comes from a great family. Uh, mom, dad, siblings, and they're just uh, 
they're kind of special people. It kind of popped right at you out of the first Zoom and first phone call. Like, man, um, he's, had, he's had some great mentors in basketball. Um, you know, one of them being Victor, who's one of the all-time greats at Oklahoma State, a guy that uh, Christian spent some time with in basketball. So there was some connectors and stuff that we had a lot of respect for in recruiting. Um, again, in transfer recruiting, I always look at the guy they played for in, 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 in the previous school. Like, that's a big thing. You know, it's just like in high school recruiting, we love to uh, recruit kids that have been coached. And um, with all these transfers, uh, Christian included, you know, we know they've been coached the right way and hard and won a lot of games. Christian's game, you know, it's like when I, when I first recruited him, I said, I don't want to change you. Like, everything you can do in terms of your pick and roll game, your shot blocking, your physicalness, the things you can do around the basket, don't want to change that. Just want to add some things to it. Uh, but I think, you know, we want each of these guys to be the best version of themselves and then make some additions to their game, but certainly no subtraction. So we're excited to have Christian. He's a positionless kind of player. Uh, he can play with Dylan and Trey. Um, we can play a, a more kind of small ball lineup with him. He's worked extremely hard on his three-point shooting. Um, I, th I think you guys will enjoy watching him play here in a few weeks. Yeah, I appreciate you asking that. Um, absolutely, you know, we working hard to try to connect with the student body, uh, not only the fireside chat, but meetings with different groups, trying to be active on campus, um, just trying to connect with the students, encouraging them to support the other teams this fall, which we hopefully transitions over to basketball, come basketball season. But, you know, soccer team, what, 2-0 and in the Big 12, first place, two games this weekend, volleyball, number one in the country, football, 1-0 and in the Big 12. So. Just trying to get the, to, to know the student body and, and um, get a relationship. Things on the horizon, you know, obviously uh, we're, we're proud to have an exhibition game this year uh, with under the Unite the Family idea and an umbrella, bringing Coach Mike Wacker back here, one of the all-time greats at this school's uh, history of basketball. He's bringing his Texas Lutheran team, and that was a game we, we uh, scheduled on purpose because we're serious about this uniting the family, bringing all the – Coaches back. I know Coach Pender's going to be back in town here in a couple of days for the for the uh, was it Hall of Honor. What they call it here. Um, obviously honoring uh, Coach Abe Lemons' family and his legacy with the Abe Lemons Classic this year and and on down the line. Coach uh, uh, Wetlick, um, looking forward to touching base with him at some point in the near future. I got to know Coach a little bit when I was with Coach Knight at Texas Tech. Uh, certainly Coach Barnes coming back this year. So the whole unite the family is real. Back with our team, uh, November 9th, it's our first game. And uh, we, we, we start that relationship with the students. It's, it's been documented, it's real. Uh, it wasn't just kind of a fake, fake news story. Um, you know, November 9th, in our first opener, if we sell out the student section, every student seat's filled, then we're gonna throw a party at the tower. And I appreciate CDC and President Hartzell's uh, support with that. But we look forward to having something really fun on campus if we can sell out that first student section on that first night. Yeah, that, that process has already started in recruiting, trying to get a depth chart where we can compete, you know, and, and uh, compete for this conference championship, be relative in March. Um, you know, it's always a challenge on good teams. Uh, we think back of the best teams we've had, we've always started the season with kind of a feeling like we got great talent. I would much rather be on that side of the fence than the other. If you guys ever hear me up here, you know, in early practice uh, talking about we might not have enough, then that's not, that's not this job. Um, so, yeah, we got to do a lot of things in terms of chemistry and rotations. But, you know, normally with the competition that we have each day in practice, those things normally work themselves out naturally. So, um, you know, we're a, we're a live, open competition right now. We've got, I think, 13 players are active today on the practice floor, uh, maybe a guy in the train room or two. But right now, no decisions have been made. Um, and we told the guys this in recruiting. This is the only way. It's like. You know, you know how hard it is to make an NBA roster? And most of our guys, that's their goal. You don't show up in an NBA training camp, you know, with a position you know, there for you, unless you're the number one or number two pick. Um, you know, we had the number six pick a couple years ago, and he was fighting to get in the rotation. So 
Um, you know, the whole deal is with competition, brings out the best in these guys. And we had a great summer and preseason with that in mind. Now it's the next step, official practice. Got time for two, three last ones. Brian, go ahead. Just a little bit concerned injured. Yeah, nobody injured. Dylan continues to come back on his protocol. Uh, but certainly not injured, just going through the process of recovering, doing a great job of warning in the training room, gets released at certain days in terms of what he can and can't do. Um, so I would think he is going in the right direction, so definitely not in injured, but not fully released yet to practice bone on bone every single day. Um, and then somebody told me this morning that Avery Benson might have tweaked his back today, but I, I've been around Avery for a long time, so um, I always get the injury report, and whatever it says about Avery, I don't even really pay attention to, because. He'll be back sooner than later. Couple last ones. Is there anything different? Since I guess Monday is like the first official workout, is there anything different than what y'all have been doing? Uh, just duration. Um, yeah, we've been going for you know 45 minutes, hour 15 some days. The NCA rule now changes, and we're in full-fledged practice. So um, they've got this deal now where uh, you know it's 30 practices in 42 days. Um, of course, two of those 30 are the exhibition game and a closed scrimmage. Um, two more of those will probably be inter-squad scrimmages. So when you really get down to it, it's about 24 or 25 practices. It ends up being about five days on and two days off. Um, so right now, we, we, we like to give the guys at least one full day off on the weekends. And then we base our off days a lot on the guys' legs. You know, I've never understood the coach that says, we're going to take off Thursday when it's Sunday night. I mean, we ask a lot of our players in practice. And we, we choose a lot of our off days based on how our guys' legs are doing and, and the time they need to recover. Um, but right now, I think more than anything, because we, we laid a great foundation this summer and fall preseason. More than right now, it's just it's the reps. It's you know it's getting out there and practicing for two hours instead of 45 minutes. One last one. Jeff in the back. Uh, you, you mentioned competition. How that's always been a key part of your program. Is there anything special or unique that you do to instill that competitive nature? Yeah, we, we you know we call our uh, culture just truth telling atmosphere. We um, you know we don't spend a lot of time each day thinking about mind games. Wait, wait. I mean, I just, you know it is what it is. Like today, uh, I'm gonna walk in that locker room here in a minute and say we gotta get our turnovers down. We got block out better. And so it's it's just you know it's the truth. It's the truth every day. So with that, it's just giving the players the information and what they need to do to improve individually. Also making sure everybody in the organization understands what we got to do to get our team better. Um, you know, whether it's practice stats, whether it's daily video review, whether it's one-on-one -on -one meetings with staff members, RT on the defensive side of the ball, um, it's just it's it's the information. You know, I tell the players all the time, we don't we don't just send you out to win the game. Go win the game. We we tell you how to win the game. We give you tools on what to do. So we know we want to be a low turnover team. We don't spend a lot of time just harping and yelling at the guys about that. We spend a lot of time with efficient coaching. Hey, we feel like if we're a two-foot jump stop team. We can, we can accomplish lower turnovers. We feel like if we stay away from the home run or Hail Mary play and just make the base hit or the first down, we can lower the turnovers. Individually, if Jalen stops spinning like a lot of freshmen do, you know, if Ramey works off two feet instead of one. So we're constantly giving the guys the tools and the plan to get it done. And I think all those things combined just create great competition because everybody's in a competition with himself to get better. And everybody obviously recognizes the competition. Hey, I'm trying to get on, get in the rotation on a very talented team. Jeff, you got one for me? Yeah. Chris, just in terms of leadership, I mean, do you, would you like to have a couple of guys that are your barefoot shooters or are you much as serious with those guys? Can it just be kind of more pure accountability or where everybody kind of feeds off each other? Can, can that work as opposed to having more guys that are just guys? Yeah, that's an interesting question and something we talk about a lot. We were talking about it last night in our uh, last meeting of the day. Because um, you know, you've had different teams. Some of our teams, we've always valued the seniors. You know, I had a really special team at Angelo State that had five seniors. We had senior breakfasts. It's almost like I sent five guys out there to shake the ref's hand before the game. That was that team. I've had other teams where you have a lot of experience, different kind of leaders, but then maybe one guy takes it. That was certainly Norris Adiase for us on our Final Four team, one of the best leaders I've ever, I've ever coached. This team, we're a work in progress. Those decisions haven't been made yet, but they'll be made over time. But I, what I do think is the leadership has to come from different positions. You know, we talked about Brock today with his toughness and just alpha and that chip. We need that. 
Um, we're certainly going to need some of our guys' experiences. Andrew Jones, Jace Febris, two of the most experienced players in college basketball. Um, you know, and even our young guys have got to lead through following. So it'll be interesting what happens. I don't know, like when we send out our captain for the first game, November 9th, I don't, you know, there might be one guy, there might be 12. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work, but I know internally we're going to have to have great leadership from everybody. Thanks, all. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. See you guys, man.